brand new episode of Confessions with Hello. Thank you so much for clicking on it. Before we get into it, make sure you are subscribed, give this video a thumbs up, and leave me a comment down below. And if you ever want to send in a confession, the email to do it, to send it to, the email to send it to is always in the description box of all my videos. Okay, let's get into this first one, y'all. This one says, I took her man for taking mine. So she said, okay, girl, this might be long. I don't even know, but let me just give you a little backstory. My cousin, let's call her Tony. So Tony lives in the hood. I love the hood. I don't care. I love a hoodlum. <laughs> so her house is the kicking spot. Since all the hood dudes live there or around her, it's always a vibe. Okay, so boom, it's me and Tony and her and our other cousin. Tony was messing with this dude. He passed away. Aww. His friend wanted me and his other friend wanted my other cousin. So a cool three man. I never took mine serious because he's a year younger than me and he's childish. I knew he had a girlfriend, but I never pursued him. It was just a smoking vibe type of thing. So him and his girlfriend broke up and she started messing with my summer boo. Mind you, everybody knows that's me. She put that's me in all caps. It's really pew pew about that D. So I was hurt. So boom, I started messing with her man. I spent a night at his house, like two nights in a row. That third night, his mom calls him and says, this ain't no fucking hotel. Mother get that motherfucker out my house. I'm like, what? I grab all my stuff and head for the door. Mind you, I'm high. So I'm high. So he started waving in my face saying, hide, hide. But I thought he was saying, hi. So I say hi. So his sister comes through the door and goes, look at her. I could have turned around and stole her, but I just walked to my car. That's where with the ex started stubbing me on Twitter. Now the city know I get in the field. So I start stubbing back, but she know. She didn't want to fight, and now I'm having his baby. She texted him saying she wants to commit unaliving herself. Laugh my ass off by a girl. She have controlled me. I am so very much confused. Um, okay, so let me just, maybe I'm just a little slow. Um, okay, so the guy from the hood, from Tony Hood, he not in the picture no more. So... The guy from Tony Hood start messing with your little summer boo. So because she started messing with your summer boo, you then took her man, right? And now her man, which I'm assuming is not her man anymore, I hope not, her ex-man, let's say, is now your baby daddy. It's a lot going on. Um, yeah, <laughs> that was, uh, am I high? Did I explain that? Did I read that correctly, friend? If you go, if you comment, please comment and say, like, I'm, that's right, right? Like, I explained that correctly. I read that correctly. The summer boo. It's, it's, it's a lot of, it's, it's, it was like a, what is that, a hexagon, a triangle, a rectangle? I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Um, but thank you. Thank you for sending me that confession. I appreciate it. Okay, so this one says, well, that's a whole bunch of short ones, y'all. This one says, he was a weirdo, part one. She said, hey, Lo, I love your channel, and I'm so glad I found you because you are so funny, and I can't wait to see you grow more and more. Thank you. She said, but to the story, my name is blank but you could call me Monet. This happened a while ago. I was walking my dog one day and he is so friendly. I love him for that sometimes to the point he walked to this one porch with this girl on the porch. We gonna call her D. I was letting D pet him then the next thing I know I heard someone say hey beautiful. I was like wait a minute so I looked up and saw it was a dude standing at the screen door. We gonna call him Jason. He wasn't ugly but he wasn't my type. So D, his cousin, told him, told me not to mind him, and I didn't. 
And I didn't, so as I was walking away, I saw Jason coming out the screen door asking for my name and age. I didn't tell him either because he looked older than me. So I asked him how old he was and he said he was 22. I was 14 at the time. He was shocked because I didn't look like a typical 14 year old. So I thought he wouldn't want to talk to me anymore because I'm 14, but little did I know I was wrong. Let me know if you want part two. Um, yes friend, I feel like you should have put part two in the email. Um, Ew. 22 and 14, you're a pedo. Pedo. Um, thank you for sending that in, friend. Yes, go ahead and send part two. Okay, this next one says, backstory of Kevin and Sarah. So she said, oh, this is this is our dresser throwing friend. She said, hey, love, thank you for sharing my dresser throwing story on platform. I've seen the viewers wanted a backstory on Kevin and Sarah, so here it is. This is literally a whole story time. They met back in high school. Kevin told me about Sarah, and but didn't introduce me to her until last year. We were supposed to have a three-way that went wrong. Sarah, her man, and I had one instead. Now, see, y'all just be, like, speeding through these. Like, we... How you just... She said, yeah, I know it was wrong. Her man had a big-ass pew-pew. That's why I slept with them. Pew, you mean, like, he had a, a big... A big... I'm going to assume that's what she meant. If it sounds like a familiar story time, you've heard it because I shared it with Odas T. After that... Now, what did I tell y'all? What did I tell y'all about sending in stories that have already been read on other channels? I'm going to go ahead and finish it because you threw that in in the middle of the email. But uh, She said, after that, we cut Sarah off for a while. Kevin started to talk to Sarah behind my back. I found out he was going out with her and not the guys because they were out drinking and totaled out his car. Thank God Kevin had his backup car. Sarah called me due to, due to myself being the only family contact of Kevin's in her phone. I had my friend take screenshots of her stories and send them to me because Kevin stayed lying when it came to Sarah. Also, I wanted myself to trust him, but his actions were those I had seen when he, when he was with Sarah. Besides, without proof, he would deny it. Kevin... Kevin's one of those people who could fall asleep on the couch and say they up. As for the items in the car, I wasn't expecting him to hold on to the evidence. I hope this clears up questions everyone had, and I apologize for not clarifying the backstory on Kevin, Sarah, and I. From here on out, when it comes to sharing on Lowe's platform, I will give the entirety of the story, no matter how long it may be, the viewers deserve it. I love you for that. I love you for that. Do you have more? Do you have more? Do you have more, uh, oh my gosh, y'all, yes, remember I told her to send in the story about, um, Sarah, how she ran Sarah off that bridge. I'm just kidding. I don't know what happened. Remember she said she had an accident. Dang, she sent it in, but it's people ahead of her. Y'all, this video is only eight minutes so far. Should I read it? Should I read it? Should I read it? Fuck it. I'm going to just read it because I don't want a whole bunch of um, short videos this week. So, okay, let's get into it. So, she said, pull up and wreck with that bitch. Revise. Oh, she sent me one and then I deleted it because she sent the revised one. Okay, so she said, first and foremost, thank you for sharing my story on your platform with your viewers. I'm realizing I had some errors and wanted to revise it. I really appreciate you, love. You are a real one when it comes to the You are a real one when it comes to the subscriber ish. I want to cut so bad, but then YouTube be tripping. You said for me to send in an accident story with Kevin and Sarah, and I had to deliver. Sarah began posting things on Instagram about her man being in jail and her kids being given to their dad by the courts. We're going to call him Ralph. He don't have a big role in this story, just don't want to keep calling him her man. 
Sarah had Ralph pull up on her provider, aka Sugar Daddy, and bust the door down. Ralph had the Sugar Daddy running for his life while he only chased him down with his Uzi. Sarah's pew pew also. Ralph lost his job due to Sarah and was placed on house arrest. During this duration, Sarah began posting her children's dad having custody of them. She was taking donations for her and her kids. Why did Kevin feel bad and ask me if he should donate? Lo, I'm a sucker for the kids. Anything for the babies. I told him we should for the babies. He insisted all funds were going straight to Ralph's com commissary. Kevin refused, but later told me he donated to the cause. Shit sound crazy as fuck, but... Shit sound crazy as fuck because Kevin told me not to donate. Kevin one day told me he wants to go out with Sarah to amend things from the throuple I had with her, and her, with her and Ralph. Lo, friend, I know it sound like a lie, but my husband of six years dead ass told me this. At this point, just get rid of Kevin, Sarah, Ralph, Sugar. Dad. Get rid of everybody. Get rid of everybody and start over. I'm sick of it. I'm tired. My response was, we both can go. Why the he tell me no because she didn't like me for sleeping with her man? Didn't y'all do a threesome? What? Is this a threesome? I'm so confused. Before going any further, I have to make this confession. I wanted to redeem myself to my husband for the mistake I made. That night, I slept with Sarah, Kevin's friend, and her man, Ralph. I was extremely drunk. Wait, Sarah, Kevin's friend, and her man. So it was for y'all? Friend. What did I what I did was wrong. Kevin thought I was making up excuses about a machine stick and Sarah taking my phone pretended to be me. He really believed her over me and I just wanted to fix it and fix my marriage. Sarah began posting more and more via Instagram. I was unable to see it due to due to blocking her after the throuple. I suggested to Kevin maybe I speak to Sarah to make her feel better. He insisted on me not doing so. Like a dumbass submissive individual, I listened. Kevin started saying how he wanted to go out with me. Go out without me. Whenever you see him, you see me. At first I was hesitant, yet I knew I had to trust him. And for those thinking I didn't let him out, completely false. I felt hesitant because Kevin claimed he was depressed and I felt like it was an excuse for me telling him not to see Sarah. Guess he was going to see her one way or another. Oh, Kevin. Kevin. <laughs> Every time I say Kevin, I think about Home Alone. Anyways, um, the first time Kevin went out, he was with his friend Michael. They went to a lounge downtown. I felt like Kevin was lying due to him having no contact with me. You know me, I blew his phone down. The excuse was a dying bone. Kevin goes out the following week with the coworker. They went downtown too. As much as I didn't want him out drinking, I knew I couldn't control him. After all, Kevin would make it home just fine. Yet that doesn't mean a thing under the influence. The third time Kevin went out, it was with his friend who had just came back from going out of town. We'll call his friend Cam. This night though, I felt something would happen. I begged Kevin not to go out, but he told me he had come home early the night before and wanted to enjoy himself. This particular night, Kevin claimed that he was at Sarah's old parking garage with the clothes she gave him. Cam parked his car because it was a safe place. I didn't think anything of it because every time he would go downtown, all the guys would park in the same garage. Plus, he told me Sarah had moved out and was living in a town 45 minutes away. That's what the fuck I get for being ditzy. This night, Kevin told me him and Cam are going to be playing drunk and bowling. Going to be playing drunk bowling. He didn't... He didn't really talk to me much, which I expected. When Kevin did, I noticed he would only talk to me when he said Cam went to the bathroom, as if Cam gave a fuck about what he was doing on his phone. I could see it being an issue on a girl's night or a date night, but this was neither. Hmm. I began thinking he was never out with the guys and with the female because... Kevin was texting me only when Cam went to the bathroom. Men don't do that shit. My intuition started to kick in and my anxiety was on a thousand. I remember crying and picturing something bad happening to Kevin. I just wasn't sure what. Kevin told me him and Cam were going to get some food from the $3 cafe so the drinks could wear off. 
he texted me saying that they were closing for the night and that they were going to go get tacos instead. As I'm looking at his location, I noticed him there for 45 minutes just sitting in a Taco Bell parking lot. It didn't take that long to eat tacos. Facts. I remember he took his smoke stuff so him and Cam were probably hotboxing the car. As my mind is racing, I see them speeding on 285 as if it was a police chase. I'm calling Kevin and he's not answering. My heart sunk thinking I was right but didn't want to believe it. As I was pushing it out, as I was pushing it out my mind, Kevin's parents called saying he had gotten into a little minor accident and asked me to give them his location. As I'm taking a screenshot, Sarah called me. That was the moment I knew my intuition never lies. She was crying and apologizing. Sarah said her and Kevin were out playing drunk bowling together. I began 21 questioning her about the events leading up to this one. I asked Sarah if Kevin, her, and Cam were okay. She said, Cam, he wasn't with us. It was just the two of us. I asked her if she was out with Kevin when he went to the lounge, and sure enough, she was. And girl, every time he went out with... Every time he went out, it was with her. Kevin was going to find his way back to see her regardless of how I felt. This is so sad and sick and twisted. And like, Kevin, if you still in love with Sarah or something, like, just get a divorce and go be with Sarah. Like, I don't understand. After, wait, as far as the accident, this was no minor incident. The way his parents put it. Kevin totaled out his car by reversing into the one behind him. Him and Sarah didn't realize it. But they were hotboxing the car and drinking liquor. So much for trying to eat and sober up. The driver they hit followed them and confronted them about hitting his car. That's when Kevin raced off with the man chasing behind him. He claimed Sarah tried to take the wheel. I'll never know the truth. As for why I didn't follow after them each time, I didn't want to involve our son. Sarah told me he went over the median, hit the curb, and jumped on the sidewalk, hitting a light post, fucking up his car. Excuse me. Do y'all hear my stomach? Am I hungry? Oh, wow. I hope y'all didn't hear that. Oh, my gosh. I'm sorry. I almost skipped a part. When Kevin crashed, he got out and ran through the woods, stumbling everywhere. Those were his only injuries. As for Sarah, she messed up her back really bad and was told she had to have surgery. Sarah, that's what you get for being out at all times of the night. At all times of the night with somebody's husband. That's what you get. Um... Those were his own, oh, the liquor for Kevin served as an epidural for him. He didn't feel a thing. Sarah, like any normal person, tensed up resulting in her injuries. I can speak on this now because it's been settled. I can say so much more about this incident, but for some reason, I still chose to choose to protect him. Yet at the same time, this story needs to be heard. It may be difficult to understand, but when kids are involved, people will do anything to keep their families together. If you're wondering how much they drank that night, they said they each had six drinks plus a bottle that was half full. The first video is of his car. The second is of the police getting him. Sorry for this long ass confession. I'm not going to show y'all what Kevin stupid ass looked like. But just know his face is pretty, it's pretty messed up. Yes, it's what you deserve, Kevin. She said, this is just a video of the car getting on the tow truck. Yeah, the whole front of the car is completely gone it's real bad and then and this is just a video of kevin getting walked away by the police so hopefully kevin spent the night in jail um friend you said we may not understand because when kids are involved people will do a lot to keep their families together um i don't have kids yet so i cannot attest to that i don't know what that's like but i do want you to want better for yourself um because that's what your son would want he would want you to want better for yourself and it just sounds like kevin just does not care about you your feelings nothing he sounds like a narcissist actually um and i don't like that for you um, you should want to be in a healthy situation so you can be the best version of yourself and the best mom version of yourself for your son. You feel me? Um, that was a lot. That was a lot. And if you ever want to send in any other stories about Kevin and Sarah, whoever else, 
we would love to read them um and give you advice or talk about it in the comments but yeah uh, i don't know if you and kevin are still together i don't know if you said that like in the first um confession that you said or if you didn't if you didn't say i hope that y'all are not still together um and if y'all are i hope that it's way healthier now and y'all got proper help and yeah just i'm not one to say what's right and what's wrong or what i would and wouldn't do because we've all been stupid for somebody like we've all been stupid for somebody so i can't really like pass judgment i can just you know just kind of give advice a little bit without you know feeling like i'm stepping on your toes or anything like that but um yeah, friend, that was a lot. And before anybody gets on my neck about this, because like I said, I skipped over a story to get to this accident. I skipped over Tay's story, and I'm pretty sure my girl would not care that I skipped over her story. But we're going to start off with, this, with the story that she sent next week. Because we just did a Tay story. And I'm sure my girl, like, Tay, comment right now. Do you care that I skipped over the story that you sent and we just gonna use it for next week. Do you care? Because if you do care and I did hurt your feelings, I'm sorry. And I'll never do that again, friend. I promise I'll never do that again. But I'm pretty sure she would not care. Because she just, she sent in a story last week. We read it. Y'all, I, I got two two stories looking at me. Looking at me dead in my face. So, I'm pretty sure she wouldn't care. But if you do care, Tay, I promise I would never do that again. But, um, yeah, y'all. So, I gave y'all four confessions this this episode which i never do but that would have been super childish i don't like that but yeah y'all that was the end of that um give this video a thumbs up let's talk about it in the comments turn on your post bell notifications make sure you are subscribed make sure you subscribe okay and i'm gonna see y'all next week for two brand new videos bye y'all